today I'm going to talk to you about the necessity of keeping your hips open and flexible. In so many of our yoga postures, we ask our hips to do a lot for us, to support our body weight, to open in some sometimes very extreme ways. And of course, yoga is full of very interesting pretzel-like postures that can be really fun and interesting to explore. But keeping our hips open is also important for athletes, or even if you tend to run or ride your bike. And we also see a lot of tightness in the hips, a cultural tightness because of the ways that we sit in our chairs with our knees together, sitting at our computers, or driving our cars for extended periods of time. So I focus a lot on opening hips in my yoga classes, and I thought I'd give you a little eye candy here. Just talk about how the tightness in the hips can lead to neck and back pain, jaw tightness, and here in this next little clip you'll see how that that tightness in the hips can actually extend all the way down the leg into the knee. And here's just a little closer look at all the muscles that we're gonna be talking about, these hip rotators. So if you've taken yoga before, chances are you might have seen some of these stretches. We're gonna come around to the other side here. But all of these stretches here, I would say are more intermediate or advanced ways to stretch the hip rotators. The only exception really is over on the far right, you'll see my friend Rupert doing a beautiful, very gentle stretch of his left hip. And uh, here's just another look at all, everything that's going on and there's layers and layers of muscles. And here's a deeper look, deep into the hip joint. There's a lot going on in that hip joint, a lot of places to become tight and those tight places can create a pull or a misalignment in the surrounding areas of the hips and lower back and that, that pull and that misalignment can then radiate out to the knees, to the neck and create tightness really all over the body. So I think of these hip rotators and these muscles deep within the hips as being the linchpins of the body. If we can open these areas through yoga or even just simple stretching, which I'll show you in a little bit, um, then we can really work to eliminate a lot of really needless aches and pains, uh, muscular aches and pains um, that a lot of uh, Western folks experience, like I mentioned, due to athletics or even just the way that we sit at our desks or in our cars. So here are some more gentle cross-legged stretches, different variations. I'm gonna show you some stills in just a little bit of some of these. And I'm not going to go super deeply into step-by-step -step of how to do each of these because I do think it's really important for folks to actually train even for a little while with a yoga instructor or go to yoga classes because the postures I am gonna show you are very foundational. You will see them in any kind of basic or even intermediate yoga class. And it's important to really get that kind of one-on-one -on -one attention that you can get from a teacher. But if you've taken yoga before, or maybe you haven't, at least you can see how simple it is. And some of these for sure you can do by yourself. So here's just a basic cross-legged position. We did this when we were children, um, sitting on the floor. Here is a slightly more crossed position. You can see Maria just have us brought her foot onto the top of her other leg. And here's one that's a little more pretzel-like, so a little more intermediate. It's not necessar necessary to go into these real pretzel-like positions, but if you've been taking yoga for a while or maybe seen some pictures, you'll see these. And what I want you to understand is that these postures are designed to stretch deep into the hip joints. And of course, um, there's a little stretch happening through the knees and the IT band as well. So I just wanted to kind of give you a sense of some of the most basic ways that you can be stretching your hip rotators, which is through cross-legged positions.
And like I mentioned before, your stretching doesn't have to be nearly as beautiful and flexible as, as Ellen here. But another reason that we want to keep our hip joints open for those of us that do yoga on a regular basis is that a lot of our yoga postures require openness and at the same time require us to be weight bearing. So we're placing a lot of weight on a hip that is both stretching and being asked to be in action. So stretching out is not just because the yoga teacher told you to, but because it's a necessary component for really making sure that the body is prepared for some of these deeper strength building postures. You can see right here and these lunges that I'm showing you right now all require the hip rotators to be in action, to be contracted, to be uh, holding up the weight of the body. And even balances like this one here with Suzanne require a lot of leg strength as well as mental strength and focus. And then of course some of the more fun, interesting acrobatic stretches like bridge postures Pigeon pose is a posture that if you've taken yoga before, you've probably seen, you've probably done it. I love this posture. It can be a little hard on the knees. So I want to encourage you, especially if you've never done yoga before, you already have knee problems to stick with some of the postures I'm about to show you. What I showed you just there was just a picture of the sciatic nerve, which sometimes these hip rotators become tight and they pinch the sciatic nerve, creating symptoms of sciatica, and you can alleviate that with some of these gentle stretches. I'm a fan of being very gentle. You can lay down on the floor and just let gravity open your hips. Here, got some of my yoga students just doing some stretches with their legs, using yoga straps. You can use a, uh, the belt of a robe. If you've got a robe at home, you can use a robe belt. But just laying down on the floor and just letting your knees open out to the side. And I'm also a really big fan of moving around in your postures. Here we've got a variety of different cross-legged stretches. You put on your favorite gentle music and then just find your breath, breathe, take some big breaths. And then just let your body move around. As important as it is to come into a stretch and just hold it for a while, I always recommend that you hold a stretch for about a minute if you're doing it on your own at home, a minute or two, put on your favorite music. But I'm also a big fan of moving around inside the stretch, really getting into those diagonal places, those back corner places, those front corner places, and opening up the entire area so you can just find your favorite cross-legged position. You can even do this in a chair and just cross one leg and just move around, mosey around in the posture. It should be a relaxing, enjoyable experience. So sometimes it's easy to get caught up in thinking that yoga is all about doing extreme postures or being more flexible or more strong, and that's true, but it's also an opportunity to just kind of let the ego go and really drop into your deepest self, creating a little more openness, a little more strength along the way for your body, your mind, and your spirit. And maybe most importantly, to do it consistently, just a few times a week makes a huge difference. And so I hope this has been inspiring for you and I hope you take this with you and enjoy stretching.